Professor Tribe, uh, so glad to have you here uh, tonight on this important night. Uh, what is your reaction to the Supreme Court deciding to hear this case? Well, I was quite convinced, given how long they were taking, that they were likely to decide to hear it. What I didn't know, and what is very disappointing, is that they would formulate the question presented at a level of enormous abstraction so that the delay that we've already seen may just be the beginning. That is, the question presented is now whether and to what extent does a president have immunity after he leaves office from criminal prosecution for conduct alleged to involve official acts during his tenure? Well, of course, Donald Trump alleges that everything was an official act. Jack Smith is at the opposite end. Instead of that, if they really had any interest in expedition, any interest in satisfying the public need to get this trial going and to have a verdict one way or the other before the election, they would have asked a narrower question. They would have simply asked whether a president charged with criminally seeking to remain in office beyond the end of his term has absolute immunity from prosecution for crimes committed in that, in that vein. That would have been the right question to ask, and it could only have had one answer. This question is so sweeping that there are a lot of ways of answering it. Yes, the president might have some degree of immunity for some official acts, but that is not the real issue. John Roberts long ago said that if a case doesn't require you to address a particular question, then as a federal judicial official, you shouldn't answer that question. You shouldn't reach out. By reaching out in this way, the court has guaranteed not only that there would be this bizarre delay they could have taken this issue before them back in last December. Not only that there be that delay, but now the delay until late April before hearing the case, there's no reason to have that several month delay. In the Bush v. Gore case, everything moved 10 times as fast. This is a much simpler matter. It could have been resolved quite quickly. And the really weird thing is that essentially everyone knows where the story has to end. It cannot be the case that when a president is in office and tries to remain in office after losing an election and commits the crimes that are involved in that, that he is forever immune from prosecution. Yet that is what would have to happen to give this president immunity. So since we know that that's where the story has to end, to drag it out this way and have a virtual guarantee that the court won't decide anything until late June, it might decide this broad legal question and send the case back to the D.C. Circuit. Even if it doesn't, no trial is likely to begin before October. In any event, no verdict of either kind, acquit or convict, is likely to happen before the election. And as a result, the people of the United States are confronted with basically a Supreme Court that is suppressing evidence suppressing evidence that they need in order to decide intelligently whether the person they are voting for is guilty of the extreme felony of trying to steal an election and remain in office. That's an unconscionable way to proceed, and yet that's what the Supreme Court has arranged by the way it's organized this case. So uh, you're focusing on the exact words of, of the question, and the Supreme Court gives the lawyers the question they want them to address. Uh, right. You're focusing on this, the, the part where it says, alleged to involve uh, prosecution for conduct, alleged to involve official acts during his tenure in office. That seems, the way you're reading it, to open the Supreme Court to arguments about 
each particular bit of evidence in the case. Was it an official act when President Donald Trump was asking Vice President Mike Pence to change the electoral vote count? Was it an official act when he was calling the Secretary of State of Georgia? Is that what where the Supreme Court could end up here, evaluating each action described in the indictment? Or laying out a blueprint and sending the case back to the Court of Appeals to evaluate the allegations. So that this is a formula for indefinite delay. I'm focusing also on the fact that the court asks whether, and if so, to what extent is there immunity? The question of whether the immunity is absolute or reaches only to a certain extent is a complicated question, the only complicated question in this case. It's the only one that the D.C. Circuit punted on, and it may be the one that the U.S. Supreme Court focuses on, namely, what is the contour of the president's official duties. What kinds of official duties are immune from criminal prosecution? It's a sort of open season for legal scholars, legal philosophers, not the kind of thing that a court that is supposed to be deciding the case before it ought to decide. This is a way of making it a much more complicated case where the bottom line at the very end of all this backing and forthing is fairly clear, quite evident. The president can't have the absolute immunity to steal an election by obstructing the proceedings of Congress up to and including fomenting violence. That can't be immune from prosecution. Yet that what is exactly what Jack Smith says he has the, the power to prosecute. So the there's plenty of fault to go around here. Merrick Garland waited too long before appointing a special counsel. The special counsel proceeded with all deliberate speed, but even he could have gone a bit faster. This indictment could have been brought somewhat earlier. The case could have been narrowed. Perhaps it will be after the Supreme Court has its say. But if Donald Trump is reelected, the case goes away. So that even if we all agree that Presidents can't be kings. They can't be above the law. After they leave, they're just citizens. Even if we all agree with that, in every practical sense, this president will have ended up being above the law because he will have managed to use the procedural gimmicks and gears of the legal system to avoid being held accountable before he could again assume office and make the whole trial go away. It's not the way a country that is concerned to preserve the rule of law and constitutional democracy would proceed. And I think the court bears some real responsibility for proceeding the way it has.